React hooks are a way for your function components to hook into React's lifecycle and state. They were introduced in React 16.8. But you might be thinking, why the heck do I need this when I can do everything in the class component as well? Core of React is the ability to break down the complexity into smaller pieces. However, we often can't break complex components down any further because the logic is stateful and can be extracted to a function or another component. This is solved with hooks and hooks let you always use functions instead of having to constantly switch between functions, classes, higher order components and render props. Apart from that, hooks cut your code like that cuts fat, makes your code slimmer, more concise and more readable. So hooks are recommended over class components, but that doesn't mean that you should rewrite your all class components. So don't sweat. We have 10 built-in hooks and I'll show you the two most used ones which will cover 90% of your use cases. First hook is useState. As the name suggests, it will allow you to maintain a local state of function components. I have this example component, so the first thing that we need to do is to import useState hook from React. To use the hook, just call it as a function and provide a default value. UseStateHook is returning an array which holds our state variable at zero index and function for updating that value at index one. Best practice is to use array destructuring to assign these values from hooks. Now, let's use this variable. First, let's display the value. Next, I'll create a simple button for incrementing the value. I'll use the onClick event to call the setCount function. Here we can access the current value and increase it by 1. Let's test that. Just a note that inside of a useState hook you can use any given type that you need like an integer, boolean, string, object, or whatever you need. The next hook is useEffect hook. This hook lets you perform side effects in function components, data fetching, setting up a subscription, and manually changing the DOM in React components are all examples of side effects. Let's first import it in our example component. By now you can see the naming pattern of hooks, and that is the use prefix. We can use our hook to update the text of our button. Add the ID to the button. Now, call the use effect, which takes a function as a parameter. Inside, we can update our button. I'll target the button via ID and update inner text. That's how you can update your DOM elements or apply any other side effects. Second argument is the array of dependencies that will fire off use effect to render again. For example, if we put the empty array, it would mean to run the effect only once. If we put the count variable there, it will signal use effect to re-render whenever this variable changes. Another thing is that if you have a subscription or using intervals and you need to clean up when a component is getting destroyed, you can do that easily. Here I'm defining a set interval and just log in to the console. All you need to do is to return the clear interval or any other method that is in charge of cleaning the component. And that's all there is to effects. Just to mention, five important rules for hooks. Never call hooks from inside a loop, condition or nested function. Hooks should sit at the top level of your component. Only call hooks from React functional components. Never call a hook from a regular function. Hooks can call other hooks. That's all for today's video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I see you guys in the next video.